In this video, we'll take a look at the impact of changing prices on the real income of labor in a Ricardian model. So here's the basic setup. We suppose that country A is able to export X into the international market and import Y when it opens up to trade. Initially, it's an autarky so that it does not have the access to the international market. Furthermore, individual workers are indifferent between the two sectors initially because the wages are assumed to be equal across sectors in autarky. Let's start out with a little bit of notation. So WAY is the wage in sector Y in country A. WAX on the far right is the wage in country A in industry X. These two wages are equal to each other as mentioned before that workers can go back and forth between industries until they're indifferent between working in one sector or another in, in autarky. Now in these two competitive sectors workers are going to be paid the value of their marginal product. That is the price of the good multiplied times the marginal productivity of labor in that sector. That gives the firm the amount of value that it takes if it hires another worker into that sector. Firms will be willing to pay that value of marginal product, which will be equal to the the wage if workers are able to extract from the firm a payment for the full value of their marginal product of labor. And these two wages are equal across sectors, as uh, mentioned uh, before. Now, importantly, in the Ricardian model, marginal productivity of labor remains constant in both sectors, regardless of how many workers are used. That is to say that MPL is constant for the, these uh, workers, whatever else happens, change in prices, change in production, whatever. Now we'll want to evaluate what happens to the purchasing power of workers when, say, the country opens up to trade. In this instance, the price of X, the export good, would rise, and the price of the imported good, Y, would fall. Now we'll depict this drop in the price of good Y in country A, the, that is the imported good, by a red arrow pointing downward. The drop in the price of Y reduces the marginal, the value of marginal product of labor in that sector, and that will tend to drive the wage down in that sector by the same amount is the price decrease if this is a fully competitive and flexible labor market in sector Y. Exactly the opposite will occur in the export sector. The price of X rises. And recall the marginal productivity of labor in X and the marginal productivity of labor in Y both stay the same so that the price rise in X in the export good tends to increase the wage in that sector by the same amount as the price increase. We can now look at the impact on real incomes. Let's assume first that labor is immobile between sectors after the opening up to trade. Workers in the import competing sector have a lower wage, can buy the same amount of the imported good and less of the exported good because its price has risen so that workers in that sector definitely have a drop in their real income. Workers in the export sector, exactly the opposite effect. They can buy the same amount of the exported good because their wage went up by the amount of the price increase in that product and they'll be able to buy more of the imported good whose price has fallen. That is to say workers in the export sector definitely will have a higher real income as long as they buy both goods. Now if you think about how this relates to the video about 
changes in national income as a consequence of opening up to trade, this immobile labor situation at the beginning is like the gains from exchange. That is to say, how a country's national income changes when they simply export at the new international price. That means, as because national income went up, because the gains of exchange, then the total amount of income that is increased in the export sector by workers must exceed the amount of income lost by workers in the import competing sector. Now, if we assume that workers can move to where wages are higher, they're all going to move into the export sector. More workers doesn't change the marginal productivity of labor, doesn't change the real income of workers in that sector. All workers will see higher real income as a consequence of opening up to trade and the higher wages in the export sector. One can think about this in the context of gains from specialization as workers go into the export sector, there's a higher national income associated with that specialization according to, to uh, compared to advantage in the international market, and those gains are spread across all workers. We'll use a particular example to give concreteness to this. So America, say, has two sectors, it takes two workers to produce an X, one worker to produce a Y, and let's assume, pull out of the air, that the autarky wages are $20 per worker. So it's totally arbitrary. Given that wage, the resulting prices for X and Y would be $40 per X and $20 per Y given the wage and the marginal productivities of labor in the two sectors. With these wages, the ability of a worker to buy X with their $20 is only one half a unit of X in autarky. With those same wages, they would be able to buy one Y with their $20. As before, we'll hold labor in mobile between sectors when they open up to trade. We'll pick a world price of X of $60 per X and a world price of Y of $10 per Y. This, of course, will induce the exports of X from this country and the imports of Y. Using the formulas for the wage, that is the price times the marginal productivity of labor, we're going to get $30 for every worker in X and $10 per worker in Y. So we see an increase in the wage in the export sector, a decrease in the wage in the Y sector. Workers in the X sector can buy, once again, a half a unit of X, as before, but they're able to buy more Y now than they did prior to the uh, opening up to trade. Workers in the import competing sector, Y, definitely get hurt. They can buy less X than they could before, but the same amount of Y. So that as long as they buy both goods, they'll definitely be worse off. Of course, now we'll let labor be mobile. Workers clearly would want to go from import competing sector to the export sector because the, the wages, both nominal and real, are higher there. As all workers move to the export sector, everyone makes $30 per worker. All workers can now buy more Y, more of the imported good, by the same amount of X. So in this example, we see higher real incomes for all workers. So we can now summarize these effects of labor in the Ricardian model when you open up to trade. With immobile labor between sectors, the workers in the import competing sector definitely get hurt. Workers in the exporting sector definitely benefit. So to the extent that you were stuck in the, a sector 
your interests are tied very much to the price of the good that you produce. If you can move back and forth between sectors, then it's much easier. All workers benefit from opening up to trade, but this is only the case in the Ricardian model, as we'll see later.